Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be solving question five from the sixth chapter of the Beer and Johnson textbook. And we have to use the method of joints in order to find the force in each member of this truss. And at the end, we have to state if the member is in compression or tension. So we have two joints at point D and F, which there are some unknowns in there. So we need to figure those out before we move on to each joint. So if you look at joint D, we'll see that we have a roller, meaning we only have a normal force in Y direction. You can call our X and Y in here. And if you look at F, we'll see that there is a pin in here, meaning we have both X and Y component. We can just consider any direction that we want for now. And at the end, if we get a negative sign, that shows that the direction is in the opposite direction of what we assumed. So if we look at the truss, we'll see that all the loads are symmetrical and all the dimensions are symmetrical. So that shows the truss is symmetrical. And in these kind of situations where we have a symmetrical truss, we can just pick one half of the truss and the other half would be same as the other one. So keeping that in mind, we are in equilibrium, so we can use our equilibrium equation. Sum of all forces is equal to zero and same for the moment. Here, if we do the sum of all forces in F in X direction, we'll see that there is only Fx, meaning this force is zero. And as we expected, since we don't have an X component at D, uh, the truss is symmetrical. So if that's the case, our D and FY is the same. And we can do some of all forces in Y direction. We don't need to go to moment equation since we have only one unknown in here. And basically we have 2D or 2FY minus 1, minus 1, minus 4, minus 2.4 is equal to 0. So 2D would be 6 plus 2.4 is 8.4. So our D, which is FY, is equal to 4.2 kips. So no negative sign in here that shows that the direction for D and FY is correct. So now that we have the unknowns here, we can move on to free body diagram of each joint. Let's start with joint A. Again, we are using the method of joints in here, meaning we have to go to each joint in order to figure out the unknowns. We're going to solve the method of sections later in the channel as we go along in this chapter. So let's see what we have at joint A. So we have one kip force applying it that way and we have these two forces which would be fab and fad so if we look at this we'll see that there is only one force in x direction and there is no other member to cancel out that force so that shows if we do the sum of all forces in x direction we only have fab so fab in here is actually a zero force member so we can consider any direction, but it doesn't matter. And obviously FAD has to be upward in order to cancel out one kip force. And if we do some of all forces in Y direction, we have FAD minus one is equal to zero. So our FAD would be one kip. So the next step we have to figure out if the member is in compression or tension. So uh, the member would be somewhere in here, and based on Newton's law, it has to be in the opposite direction of what force FAD is applying or the member is applying to the joint. So if we look at this, we'll see that the member is in compression. We can put a C in here as the answer for FAD. So, so far we found two in here. We found FAB and FAD. Let's move on to another joint. We can go to joint D and let's see what we have at joint D. So joint D we have uh, three members attached to that point and we have the force D. 
So we figure out D is 4.2. And we have three different members attached to it, which we need to figure out. So FAD, we know the direction from the previous part. Uh, it has to be in this direction. So we know the FAD, which is one kip. And there are two more forces in here, which are FBD and FDE. So FBD in here and FDE. And regarding the direction, we can pick whatever direction we want. But if you look at it, we'll see that we have 4.2 upward and we have one kip downward, which means FBD has to be in this direction in order to cancel out the 4.2 kip. And since FBD has X component to the left, FDE has to be to the right. Again, this is just a quick way to figure out the directions in order to have, avoid that negative sign at the end. But we can pretty much pick whatever direction we want. And in order to do our FX and FY, we need some information regarding this angle here. And we can do two things. We can either find the hypotenuse of this triangle in here using Pythagorean theorem, or we can just find this angle here, alpha. So if we call this angle here alpha, alpha would be tangent inverse of opposite, which is 6.4 divided by 12. So just figure this out quickly, tangent inverse of 6.4 divided by 12, that's gonna give us 28.07 and now we're good to go to find our fx and fy so fx we have so actually let's start with fy because we only have one unknown in fy and after that we can find fx so for fy we have 4.2 minus 1 minus fbd sine of alphas which is sine of 28.07 is equal to zero. So FBD here would be 3.2 divided by sine of 28.07. So 3.2 divided divided by sine of 28.07. So that's going to give us 6.8. Uh, no negative sign as we expected, so we just have to figure out if the member is in tension or compression. So FBD is here. The force has to be in the opposite direction, so it will be compression. And now that we have FBD, it's easy enough to find FDE, so we'll do some of all forces in X direction. FDE minus f b d cosine of 28.07 is equal to zero so f d in here is basically 6.8 times cosine of 28.07 so 6.8 times cosine of 28.07 that's going to give us six kips and again no negative sign as we expected and here the member has to be in tension so let's back get back to the figure let's see what we found so far so we did the joint a we found a b and we figured actually that that's a four zero force member we found fad we found fbd we found f d e and the only force that's left is the f b e which means we need the joint e in order to figure out the force in f b e so we're going to draw the free body diagram of joint E. 
and let's see what we have at E. So we have the 2.4, we have FBE, which we are, which is the force that we are looking for. And we have FDE and FEF. So looking at this, because of the symmetry, we know that FDE and FEF is the same. So if that's the case, the X components at point E will be canceled out. And we only have FBE, which has to be in the opposite of 2.4 kips upward. So easy enough basically have these two forces which are in y direction x direction and we have the 2.4 that's actually downward so we have the 2.4 kips in here and fb in here we can do some of all forces in y direction basically our fbe will be equal to 2.4 kips and if we want to figure out if the member is in compression or tension we can see that the member is in tension and regarding of the direction of the components in x direction so if we look at here we have to look for fde that we found in the previous step fd is in here which we figure out is in tension so this has to be the direction for fde in here and this will be our fef but we really don't need that because all we need in here is going to uh, some of all forces in y direction and we can figure out the unknown that we have in here there's one more step left and that would be so so far we solve the left half of the truss as i mentioned because of the symmetry everything would be the same on the right half of the figure or the truss so fab is actually equal to fbc fad would be equal to fcf and we have fbd fbd would be same as fbf and at the end fde is equal to fef and fb is the mutual member between these two halves so that would be all for this one hope everything was clear let me know if there is anything or you have any questions feel free to drop it in the comment i'd be happy to answer those we are covering three different textbooks in this channel feel free to check out the playlist and let me know if you want me to solve specific problem from these textbooks in the next videos. And you guys take care. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.